the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Pei Han. I'm going to talk about two-round secure multi-party computation minimizing public key operations. It is joint work with Sanjam Garg and Akshay Srinivasan. The first question you want to ask, what did we achieve in this work? And this is exactly what we did. Next, I'm going to explain each of these terms in more detail. What is secure multi-party computation? What does two-round mean? What is public key operations? And why do we want to minimize it? So let's get started. Secure multi-party computation, MPC, once again, it is a protocol among multiple parties. Every party has a private input, and they want to jointly compute some function f on their private inputs. So they can run such an MPC protocol. At the end of the protocol, everyone learns the output. The security guarantee is, again, uh, the, the output y is the only thing that they can learn from this computation. Even if up to n minus 1 parties are corrupted and colluding, they cannot learn anything more about this party's input to x3. So this is the definition of MPC. What does two round mean? Well, it means the MPC protocol has two rounds. Here is what a two round MPC protocol looks like. We assume there is a broadcast channel, and the protocol has two rounds. In the first round, every party broadcasts one message to all the other parties, which depends on their private input. End of the first round. In the second round, every party broadcasts another message to all the other parties, which depends on their private input and the first round of messages that they have received. End of the second round. And then everyone can figure out the output. So now you may be asking, why do we care about round complexity? Why is it important to minimize the number of rounds? Why do we consider two rounds? Consider a protocol, let's say, between two parties. And if the round complexity is too high, then probably most of the work has to be done just in the communication, especially if these two parties are, say, me and my mom, who sits in China, which means the network latency between us becomes a few hundred milliseconds. So maybe most of the work of this protocol has to be spent on the network latency. So it's usually very important in MPC to minimize the round complexity. Why, do, why don't we consider the minimum number of rounds, which is one round, or because it's impossible to compute certain functions in one round in MPC. So two rounds is the minimum number of rounds that we can hope for. Can we do two round MPC then? Let's briefly look at the literature. Uh, back in the 80s, Goldrick, Michali, and Wilderson gave a MPC protocol that can, that can compute any function, and the round complexity is the depth of the circuit that computes this function. So the number of rounds grows with the depth of the circuit. And later, Bieber, Michali, and Rogaway gave a constant, give a constant around the MPC protocol, which is independent of the depth of the circuit. OK, great. Um, and then in terms of two-round MPC, now we know constructions from various assumptions, especially the recent work by Ben Hamoda and Ling and Gargan Srinivasan, which constructs two-round MPC from this primitive called two-round oblivious transfer. Since we also know two-round MPC implies two-round OT. So now they imply each other. So this is also kind of the minimal assumption that we can hope for. OK, now we can construct two-round MPC from the minimal assumption. What's next? Can we implement? Well, you can, but it's just too slow. One of the reasons is that there are too many public key operations. Why is that, why is that a bad thing? Because public key operations are very slow. To, to give you a better sense how slow it is, compared to symmetric key operations like AES, it can be done like hundreds of millions of operations per second. But in contrast, public key operations or asymmetric key operations can only be done tens of thousands per second. This number may vary for different implementations or different machines. But this is just to give you a high level idea why, why public key operations are very slow. OK, so it's very important to minimize public key operations. And here comes our main result. We constructed two-round MPC from two-round OT, which is a minimal assumption. And the state of the art uses this many OTs, which is essentially this many public key operations. And we improve it to this many OTs and essentially this many public key operations, plus polynomial number of symmetric key operations. Well, n is the number of parties Lambda is the security parameter, and C is the size of the circuit, namely the number of gates in the circuit. So before, 
the number of public key operations is a polynomial in the number of parties, security parameter, and size of the circuit. Now we improve it to be independent of the size of the circuit that computes the function. The rest of the result is the same as before, semi-honest uh, two-round MPC from two-round semi-honest OT and malicious MPC from two-round malicious OT in the CRS model. Okay, so this is our main result. Next question, how did we achieve it? If you think about it, now we have two-round MPC which uses this many uh, OTs. How can we reduce the number of OTs or the number of public key operations? A natural idea is to use OT extension. What is OT extension? It is intended to do the same number of OTs but with much fewer public key operations. This seems to be exactly what we want. Can we just combine these two primitives to minimize the public key operations in MPC? The first question you need to ask is that since we still want a two-round protocol, is there a two-round OT extension? The answer is yes. Beaver's OT extension is two rounds. This seems even more perfect. Can we just combine two-round MPC with two-round OT extension to minimize the public key operations in MPC? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, trivially combining these two primitives doesn't work. And why? At a very, very high level, the reason is the following. You look at this puzzle, uh, this two-round MPC, and we want to minimize the public key operations, and there is a missing piece here. And you feel like two-round OT extension is exactly the missing piece. Can we just plug it in? But if you look at two-round OT extension, it actually looks like this. So, so it doesn't match. And in more detail, if you look at two-round MPC, it needs to do this many number of OTs, and there are two special properties that they need from the underlying OTs. I will talk about this in a minute, but let's look at two-round OT extension. It can do the same number of OTs, that's no problem, but it doesn't satisfy these special properties. So there is a mismatch between these two primitives. How can we solve it? Again, at a very, very high level, here is what we are going to do. We're going to somehow modify the puzzle here and also the small piece here so that they can match. In more detail, we're going to weaken the special properties. And also, we're going to look deeper into the two-round MPC and two-round OT extension, somehow modify them so that, first, um, the weakened properties are, are sufficient for the two-round MPC. And second, two-round OT extension also satisfies these uh, weakened properties. In the rest of the talk, I will tell you what are these special properties, why they're needed for MPC, and why they're not satisfied in two-round OT extension, and how we're going to solve it. Here's a technical overview uh, for the rest of the talk. First, I will need to define two uh, building blocks. One is called Yao Scarborough circuit. The other is two-round oblivious transfer. This is the only place that we need to use public key operations. And next, I will tell you what are the special properties that are needed for the existing two-round MPC and why they are needed. And also, I will tell you how two-round OT extension works and why it doesn't satisfy the special properties, why there is a mismatch. And finally, I will briefly tell you how we solve the problem. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the first building block, Yao Scarborough circuit, at a very high level, it takes an arbitrary Boolean circuit and garble it into a garbled circuit. Take an arbitrary input to the uh, to the circuit and garble it into a garbled input. And then you can evaluate this garbled circuit and figure out the output. The security guarantees that the only thing that you can learn from this evaluation is the output. Nothing more. Nothing about the circuit, nothing about input. Only thing that you can learn is the output. This is the Yaws Garbo circuit. Uh, the second primitive that we will need is OT, uh, oblivious transfer. It is a special uh, MPC protocol between two parties. We call them sender and receiver. The input from the sender is a pair of messages, M0, M1, and the input from the receiver is a single bit, B. At the end of the protocol, the receiver gets one of the two messages depending on his choice bit. So if B is zero, he gets M0. If B is one, he gets M1. Security guarantees uh, very simple, B is hidden to the sender, 
and uh, the other message is hidden to the receiver. Okay. Two round OT is a special OT protocol that only has two rounds. In the first round, the receiver somehow encrypts his bit B, sends to the receiver, uh, sends to the sender, and keeps some randomness as security information. In the second round, the sender somehow encrypts hard two messages and sends to the receiver. And then the receiver can use the secret information to recover M sub B. Security guarantees the same as before. B is hidden to the sender. The other message is hidden to the receiver. OK, now we have the two building blocks. We can uh, look into two-round MPC. How does it work? What are the special properties? Why they are needed? At a very, very high level, the two-round MPC works as follows. Between every pair of parties, they need to run k number of oblivious transfer in parallel, where k is a polynomial in the security parameter and size of the circuit. And each of these oblivious transfer is a two-round OT. So the two parties will run k number of two-round OT in parallel. And here are the two special properties that they need from the underlying OT. The first property is that the, these decryption secrets are known by the receiver before the, first, uh, before the second round. And this is naturally satisfied in this case, because all these secrets are generated by the receiver in the first round. So they're no before the second round. OK, this is satisfied. The second property is that these decryption secrets are independent to each other. What does it mean? It means that if you want to decrypt the first message, you only need the first secret. If you want to decrypt the last message, you only need the last secret. They're all independent. Revealing one secret doesn't affect any other OTs. And this is also naturally satisfied in this case because all the OTs are in parallel and independent, so the decryption are also independent. But now you might be asking, why do we need these two primitives? They're trivially satisfied. They are actually very important for the two-round MPC to work. Let's take a closer look at the two-round MPC. What are the messages? In the first round, every party prepares a bunch of OT1 messages and broadcasts. In the second round, every party prepares a bunch of garbled circuits along with OT2 messages and broadcasts. That's it. But one crucial point here is that the decryption secrets are somehow hard-coded inside the garbled circuits. And that's why we need the first property. Because the decryption secrets are hard-coded inside the garbled circuits, they have to be known by the receiver before the second round because they are used in generating the second round messages. Another crucial point here is that after the second round, the parties will try to evaluate these garbled circuits. And in the evaluation, these decryption secrets are output by different garbled circuits in different places, depending on the actual computation. So that's why we need the second property. Revealing one secret shouldn't affect the security of any other OTs. The decryption secrets have to be independent to each other. OK, so now we have seen the two special properties and why they are needed for MPC. Now let's look at two-round OT extension. OT extension at a very high level, the idea is the following. The two parties, instead of doing k oblivious transfer, they just do lambda of them. And in addition, the, the two parties will run polynomial number of symmetric key operations, which we don't care. So this way, you can minimize the public key operations to just lambda. And two-round OT extension in particular works as follows. It has two rounds. In the first round, the receiver generates a new set of choice bits, lambda of them, somehow encrypts it, sends to the sender, and keeps some uh, secret information. In the second round, the sender somehow encrypts all her messages and sends to the receiver. And then the receiver can use the secret information to recover all the messages. Now let's see if the two-round OT extension satisfies the uh, two special properties. The first property, the decryption secrets are known by the receiver before the second round. This is satisfied because all these secrets are generated by the receiver in the first round, so they are known before the second round. This is good. 
However, the second property isn't satisfied. Namely, the decryption secrets are not independent anymore. If you want to decrypt any of these messages, you need to actually reveal the entire secret here. And why is that? Let's take a closer look at the protocol. So in the first round, the receiver randomly generates a new set of choice bits, lambda of them, and create uh, lambda OT1 messages for these new choice bits and sends to the sender and keep some secret information. It computes something else, also sends to the uh, sender. In the second round, the message sent from the sender consists of a, a big garble circuit along with a bunch of OT2 messages which are corresponding to these OT1 messages. And now the receiver can use the secret information to decrypt these OT2 messages and the output is actually the garbled input. So he can evaluate the garbled circuit and get the output, which is exactly what he wants. So what is inside this garbled circuit? This is a functionality of this garbled circuit, but you don't have to look very closely into it. But one thing you should notice is that this circuit takes as input a string of all the new uh, choice bits and inside the functionality, it computes a pseudo-random generator on this S, which means if you want to compute any of these messages, you have to take the entire S and first compute a PRG, which means if you want to do, if you want to decrypt any of these OT messages, you have to actually reveal the entire secret and recover all the garbled inputs. And that's the reason why the second property isn't satisfied. The decryption secrets are not independent at all. Okay, so now we have seen why there is a mismatch between two-run MPC and two-run OT extension. In the last few minutes, I will, tell, I will, I will briefly tell you how we can solve it. Let's go back to the two-round OT extension. It doesn't satisfy the second property. The first thing that we're going to do is to somehow modify the two-round OT extension such that the second property will be satisfied. And here is the idea. The sender will, in addition, generate a new set of messages. We call them masks. And the two parties will run the two-round OT extension on these masks. And in addition, the, uh, the sender will send her original messages XOR with these masks. Now the receiver can use these masks to unmask the corresponding message. So these masks are kind of a one-time pads. Okay. Uh, but the benefit of this is that now you can view these masks as decryption secrets. And now they're independent. If you want to recover any of these messages, you only need to reveal the corresponding mask. They're independent. However, the first property isn't satisfied anymore because now these are the decryption secrets and they're only known by the receiver after the second round. Remember, we need this property because in the two round MPC protocol, the decryption secrets are hard coded inside the garbo circuit. And we're going to solve this problem by somehow weakening this property. And the idea is to remove this restriction. So here is the idea. Now the decryption sequence become these masks. And instead of hard coding these masks inside the garbo circuit, we will have another garbo circuit that computes these masks and somehow feed into these garbo circuits. So we will weaken the special properties to be the decryption secrets can be somehow computed and fed into the, the garbo circuits. This is very vague, but after weakening the special properties, we can further modify the two-round MPC and two-round OT extension so that everything, everything matches. I won't have time to talk about that, but let me summarize. So this is what we achieved to run the MPC protocol from the minimal assumption to run OT. And using, uh, we improve the number of public key operations to be independent of the size of the circuit. And when we try to combine to run MPC with to run OT extension, they don't match. 
So we somehow change the special properties that are needed for MPC and modify these two primitives so that everything can match. So the, that's that's all for symmetric. Uh, that's all for uh, semi-honest setting. For malicious setting, there are more challenges, and we developed new tools to solve them. A little bit on the future work. A central question we want to ask is how to make it more practical. Like for example, now the construction is making non-black box use of the underlying crypto operations. Can we make it black box? Unfortunately, it is impossible if you want to keep it in two rounds, and you will hear it why uh, in tomorrow morning, second talk. Um, so can we, can we weaken it a little bit to have black box but three rounds, maybe combining with the three round black box OT extension? And further, if we want to make it more practical, what are the concrete optimizations that we can do? With that, I will conclude my talk. Thank you.